Okay, so today it's seven days since I got my walking pad. I wanted to test it for seven days and see how I felt about it. I've also needed to do my energy readings because I want to know how much this thing is going to cost to run. That's a really important one for me on a tight budget. So I've been thinking about how things have changed since I got this. So the first thing I would say is that I didn't realise just how much time I spent at my standing desk. I There will be times when I'm working, so I'm doing admin, I'm doing financial admin, I may be doing listings, editing photos, I do a lot of YouTube video editing, so that takes a lot of time. So I spend a lot of time at a standing desk. And I've been doing that since 2020, since we went into lockdown and then I discovered standing desks and that was great. It has caused one or two problems for me. I get pain in my feet now that I never used to get. And that is because I stand on a flat floor in shoes with, or like slippers or whatever, with no support. And that has started to take its toll. So what I've done, I've... Um, in terms of the walking pad, I walk in shoes with good support. I have my Skechers trainers, which are have got the most amazing support and have really helped reduce the pain generally in day to day because now they're the shoes that I wear out most of the time and they've been fantastic. I've also now invested in a new pair of insoles that I can put into other shoes, which have a similar kind of support. So I'm going to see how that makes a difference. I've only had those for a few days, so we'll see how that helps. Um, I can put those into indoor shoes so that I don't have to wear my outdoor trainers indoors on the treadmill. And I can put them into my slippers, so when I'm just walking around all day, and I don't necessarily want to have my feet stuck in shoes all day, I can put these in. Um, they're really good. I'll just put the information up about those there. There are all different types you can get. I thought I'd try these ones. I've had cheaper ones before. Not as good. I wanted something that had the arch support. So that's what I've gone for. So bearing that in mind, I spend clearly too much time at my computer. A lot of the work that I do involves admin. I'm doing spreadsheets. I'm doing invoices. I'm working on my website. I'm dealing with photographs. I'm doing YouTube. There's such a lot of my time is now spent at my standing desk. So I have my um, walking pad underneath the uh, desk. I've managed to rig up the system so that I can now push it forward so that it's not always in the way. As you saw in my previous video, I didn't really have enough space. Um, thankfully, I've managed to sell my bike. That's going tomorrow. So I can now have a shift around when that's gone and make better space for this to be in situ permanently. And that will be um, much better for how my room is laid out. So what I've realised is that I am quite, also quite good at multitasking. So I'm on the walking pad and I found that there are lots of things that I can still do on my laptop. Sometimes I might just be watching a YouTube video. It might be like a break, a little bit of downtime. It might be a business YouTube video I'm watching. I watch videos from a lot of other creatives who work in similar ways to me. So I'm always finding out what's going on, particularly in e-commerce and things like that. Um, I also listen to podcasts. And if I'm just doing basic admin, like I'm looking up information, I'm doing emails, um, that sort of thing, I have found that I can walk and I can use the computer at the same time. Don't have the same thing with the phone. If I've got my phone in my hand, for some reason I can't do the balance. I think it's because my hands are on the keypad and it's helping me to keep my balance. So I found that I can do quite a lot of my work whilst I am walking. And what that also means is that I am having no trouble at all meeting my step goal. My step goal was 10,000 steps a day wherever I was doing the steps. And I'm finding that on most days I am exceeding that because I'm at the standing desk anyway. There will be days when I don't use it as much. Um, when I do my weekend cleans, I hit about just over 5,000 steps already. 
uh, if I go out on hike days, I won't use it at all because I'll hit that, that limit anyway. Less of those going on at the moment, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to have this um, this walking pad is because I'm not able to get out as much. Most of my day-to-day -day activities don't involve me moving around very much. When I'm going out and doing errands, again, I'll be lucky if I hit 3,000 steps a day. So I need to build that in and I am not motivated to going outside. But the novelty of having a treadmill at home means it's incredibly easy and it's there in front of my desk so I have to stand on it to get to my laptop anyway so I switch it on and I'm not talking about ambling steps I'm not doing like window shopping steps uh, the speed on this goes up to five and I'm usually going up to three and a half is really comfortable for working at the same time and then I can also hit four if I'm literally just like watching a YouTube video or something like that um, so I'm finding it really easy to hit those targets. Uh, so that means that I'm able to stick to my usual routine and not feel guilty about not moving around because I'm, I'm moving around, I'm just not physically going out to do it. And the going out thing is the problem. We're having terrible weather at the moment. I mean, it's nice and sunny today, but we've had a lot of rain. We've had a lot of high winds. I'm not going to go out in that unless I have to anyway. It's just, it, I don't have the motivation for it. So at least by doing it this way, I am getting those steps in. I feel relaxed. I don't feel as frustrated at the end of the day because I feel like I've done something more constructive. Another knock-on effect is that I'm drinking more water because in order to get into my two litre a day water drinking habit I've just got used to every time I go out I take my bottle with me and I've got a one litre bottle so that at least when I go out and whilst I'm out I am sipping on that water. Now because I'm walking at home I am finding that I'm reaching for the water because I'm doing the same action so I'm finding it easier to hit that limit every day. Um, the, the multitasking as I've mentioned I found that I can multitask when I'm working on the laptop uh, that I mean I don't walk all the time on the laptop so sometimes I'll take the laptop and I'll sit down because otherwise my step count is going to be massive and I don't want to find that I'm going from doing 3,000 steps a day to doing 16,000 and then do myself some damage because that is exactly the sort of thing that I would do. So at the moment I'm averaging anywhere between 10,000 and 14,000 a day depending on what mood I'm in, depending on how busy I am. If I'm out doing other things I don't have the time. And that's fine because it means it's breaking up the routine more which is good. And that change of routine has been really advantageous to me. I'm really enjoying that this is now a different way for me to work and I feel like I've, one of the reasons I think I feel more relaxed is that I now feel more in control again I'm able to get that exercise without constantly feeling bad for not going out I mean to get 10,000 steps in a day you've got to do about five miles going out and walking the block for five miles every day is just the most insanely boring thing I can imagine doing I'm not very good with routine, but if I'm already doing something else and I'm almost like locking off to the walking because I'm focusing on whatever I'm doing on the laptop, so it's taking away me focusing hard on the fact that I have to go and walk. So this feels easy for me. I have the kind of routine where I'm not constantly at the beck and call of other people. I work from home most of the time, I live on my own, I don't have family nearby so I'm not constantly being pulled away to do other things which would probably get me out and about anyway but I don't have those things at, at hand so that's the way that is. And I feel that I've very quickly instilled a good habit. Now because I have spent good money on this I want to get my money's worth out of it. It's not like, I know a lot of people spend a lot of money on gym gear, a lot of money on expensive clothes, expensive trainers, and then one week later they're bored. I want this to be part of my everyday life for as long as, I, as I'm able to walk. 
And what I'm hoping as well is that as I get used to doing more walking anyway, I will start to want to do more walking. And that brings me on to my final point about this, which is the energy usage. So I have, so for the last week, I have been monitoring my energy usage. I took a reading seven days ago on my meters, on my electric meter, and I, I took another one this morning because that would represent the end of um, exactly seven days. And I've been doing some other things because I know that obviously this is going to cost me energy. It's not going to be nothing. It's not like an LED bulb. So what I started doing is five days before I started to switch off my freezers at night. And what I've done, I've set up an electric timer so that my freezers go off at 10 o'clock in the evening and they come on again at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I worked out based on that five days that those two freezers were costing me roughly 0.85 of a kilowatt unit per 24 hour period. Now I could do more with the freezers because if it's say for instance you have a power cut your freezer will keep your food frozen for up to 48 hours depending on how full your freezer is. The fuller it is the longer it stays frozen and also depending on the make model and the ambient temperature of the room. I could extend that and I may well extend that um, because I've taken my readings and what I have discovered is that my meter energy usage seems to have gone back up to where it was before I started switching the freezers off which means that the treadmill is costing me between 0.8 and 0.9 of a kilowatt unit to run per 24 hour period. Now, I've been using the treadmill more than I thought. So I wanted to hit 10,000 steps. I've been hitting sometimes 12 or 14,000. So it may be that I need to say, right, I only do 10,000 on the treadmill. That will bring that energy use down a bit. And I always top up by going out and walking around. That could be a good incentive to get me outside a bit more and certainly when it comes to things like using energy and saving money those are my best incentives. So it looks like if I carry on with the freezer situation and I don't exceed the usage on the treadmill my energy is back to where it was, which was about 2.14 kilowatts of energy per 24 hours. Now, I am now going to keep doing this experiment for 30 days. So I've done the first seven days. I'm going to do it for another three weeks. I'm going to look at my meter readings at that point because I need to get a feel for an average month. And that will be different because there will be different weeks when... I use the washing machine a bit more when I might not be around, um, particularly where I'm doing different cleans on different days that have different amounts of energy being used already by me. So I need to get a good overview of a full month. I've done a seven day, which has included, not included one of my cleans, which is a fortnightly clean, but equally I had a day where I didn't use the treadmill because I went on a hike and I did my step limit. So I need to get a feel for what a full month will look like to really know how much this is going to cost me and I will keep monitoring that um, so I can see where that goes. But it looks like it's under 0.9 of a kilowatt per 24 hour period but I think I can get that down a bit by juggling a few different ways I use my energy. So that's my update. This has been for me really um, a really good project. I feel like it's a really good purchase and yes I know I've only done seven days and I'm going to keep going with this and I will keep monitoring it and I will keep reporting back because I think these are worthy experiments. I have seen other people do one month um, like 30 day reports on using treadmills uh, with varying degrees of success but people have very different routines and very different motivations and one of the longer term 
things that I want to think about is how this is affecting my health. I feel pretty good, my joints feel good, my legs feel good, my hips don't get stiff, I've noticed that. I feel like I've taken back some control because I'm now doing the exercise that I wanted to do and wasn't self-motivated enough to do by going outside. So that has been good. Whether long term this will make a difference to my fitness or my weight, I have no idea. I did take a, a weight measurement before this arrived, the morning that this treadmill arrived, before I started using it. I'm not going to check my weight because um, I have in the past, when I've got into exercise, become a bit too obsessive about monitoring my weight and things like that. So I want to avoid that because I'm a little bit prone to that. Um, so I'm not going to look at my weight at all. I might have a look at the end of 30 days. I'll see how I feel about how it's gone. Uh, but I don't want to start getting into that negative habit. One other thing that I thought I would mention is something that I've heard on a couple of videos, YouTube videos that I've watched about this, is something called toxic productivity, which I'd not heard of before. I assumed it was something to do with bad practices in the office, you know, problems with other people, but it turns out it's when you feel guilty that you're not working hard enough and you have to do more and that some people who have this and have these treadmills feel like they have to cram as much in as possible I am a little bit prone to that and not so much now I used to be used to be like constantly feeling guilty for not working hard enough for not doing enough um, and that happened really since I became self-employed when you start to self-manage and there are things that are taken out of your working week that used to be there like long commutes um, longer hours because you're having to deal with lots of people and a lot of your work time would be wasted time at work um, and I don't have any of that and over time and it's taken a long time it was really locked down I think that started to improve things for me where I started to look at being able to take a step back and say, it doesn't matter, it, it, it's what you do within, within the time that you are working, not how many hours a day you're working. So I probably, how many hours, I don't know how many hours I work. I would say that if I added up everything I do, I probably still do work, say, an hour, eight hour day. But there's no stress, there's no pressure. And... I get to work at what I want to. There will be days when I work more. There will be days when I work less. I do tend to work seven days a week, but I'm more likely to do, say, four productive hours per day over a seven day, rather than cram eight hours a day into five, because my routine allows for me to do that. That's the structure of my setup. So adding, I don't think that adding a walking pad is detrimental to my working life so to speak and I'm going to keep monitoring things as I go I said I will keep looking for other videos about people doing 30 days because I'll be really interested to see just how things change um, I've become more focused on how I walk I've started to look at my posture better I once heard a tip about how people don't walk properly and this woman said imagine that someone has stuck a post-it note to the bottom of your shoe and there's something written on the post-it note and whilst you are out walking you want the person walking behind you to see what's written on the post-it note and think about how you walk with your feet how you use your ankles and flex your ankles when you walk and I started to do that because I had noticed that particularly where I'm on a standing desk a lot my ankles got very stiff and I wasn't flexing the muscles in my feet properly and now that I whenever I go out walking I think about having that post-it note on the bottom of my shoes and I walk with more flex in my ankles and things like that and that has definitely been helpful so there's all these little things that are that I'm thinking about and just the general 
perception of taking control of my health more. I'm not eating more and in fact because I am standing around less and on the treadmill walking when I'm doing things where I might go I'll just go and get something to nibble on from the kitchen but instead I'm walking and I've got my bottle of water and so I think that's going to be really beneficial as well to help rein in a little bit of my snack craving. I'm a little bit of a grazer I always have been, it's just the way I am, and I have been very good about reining it in, about reining in what sort of food I have available in the kitchen. And and I think this is just helping to take some of my attention away from the kitchen and be more focused on doing an activity whilst doing other activities where I might have just gone, oh, I'll just go and get something to eat while I'm there. So that's my update so much covered in just seven days thinking more carefully about my day-to-day -day life and how I structure things um, so I'm hoping that this will go well the only thing that might be out of its favor is if the energy usage comes in too high I am really hoping that my calculations are about right the odd unit here or there higher isn't a problem but I have a very fine line when it comes to my energy budget and I'm really careful about the energy I use at home. So I, it's something that I might have to keep monitoring. Anyway, so that's my update. Um, food for thought, for sure. But I hope you found that useful. If this is something you were thinking about doing, but you were scared about wasting the money, were you going to use it? Think about all these things when you're thinking, not just thinking, oh, I'm just going to walk a bit more. Think about how this will feed into the rest of your daily life because it you know the mental the physical and maybe even some of the emotional um, changes that you can make by doing this it all feeds into the same thing and I think it's um, kind of useful so that's my little update um, I hope you found that useful I will report back in another three weeks with my one month update and then I will know what I'm doing then. I've got a 30 day money back on this. I don't think it's going to go back. I think I'm just going to have to regulate how much I use it to make sure that the energy usage it isn't taking me over my budget. But I think that's the only potential drawback. But we can work on that. So thank you for watching. Uh, do post any comments if you need to ask anything, as I say before, um, I have the Sperox 3-in-1 treadmill. I'll put the picture up there of the actual treadmill, which is the one I bought. And, um, yeah, so I hope you found that useful. Just adding a little bit of extra control into my life that I needed because, oh, I've let myself down. <laughs> so thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you in three weeks. Bye-bye.